Rachel was the youngest of our four children. She was born in Weymouth in Dorset and when she was five months old we moved to Withington which is about four miles outside of Hereford. She was a very loving girl. She was very generous with her time and her friends. She always had a wicked sense of humour. Rachel did a lot for people that she felt weren't as fortunate as she had been in life. She liked to take part in any sponsored activity, sponsored walks, swims. I can remember her more or less forcing me to buy the big issue when I was with her once. She was quite outgoing, um, bubbly and really caring. One of the things I remember was that Rachel loved football and we'd always get together when we could to play football. It'd be the two brothers against the two sisters and it's just really good fun. When I was with Rachel, uh, and it could be any time from little girl up to teenager, um, life was fun. Super little girl, well loved by everybody, lots of friends, no cares in the world. I had everything in it going for her and she knew that she had everything going for her. With Rachel, you would have liked her. She walked in the room, she lit it up. She was very affectionate to me um, and I missed that terribly. It's very difficult to put into words and to articulate a bond that you have with your closest friend. There's a particular walk that we used to take in the village. Um, we've done it in the winter, the autumn, the summer and the spring and it, it's beautiful and you can see Dimmore Woods and you know, like the Malverns and the Black Mountains. And we both loved that. We, we felt calmed by nature and could sit for hours. We talked about being mothers together and our lives together in the future, years down the line, and travelling together. Out of four of us kids, she, she was the person that had the musical talent. Um, and we didn't really need to push her to play the piano. She sort of just took to it. She was in great demand around the piano at Christmas with Rachel. Um, we used to like to have competitions where we put the carols in a hat and we'd pull one out and Rachel would have to accompany it and whoever pulled the carol out would sing whichever one it was. It was really a very happy family time with her. You're lucky when you find someone like that who, who you can feel so happy with and feel so relaxed with. Um, and we'd found that with each other and we knew it and we talked about it um, and so we knew we'd be friends forever. Rachel was very happy when she left school. She was delighted with her 10 GCSEs, um, determined that she wanted to carry on for her A-levels and go to university. Well, Rachel and I went to look at the universities that she thought she may be interested in. We went to Nottingham, Liverpool, Sheffield, Coventry. Well, not long after we got back from travelling around the universities, um, she had a telephone call from a boyfriend asking her out. Rachel was very excited. I can remember her going up to her bedroom, trying on various clothes, asking how did she look in this, how did she look in that. He came over as very polite and well-spoken and I had no worries about it at all at the time. Then it shortly followed that she told us she decided she wasn't going to take up her place at university and Rachel decided instead um, to go for a job at Thresher's Wine Merchants. There always used to be a sparkle in Rachel's eyes, a certain devilment that you could see when you looked at her. And we slowly started to see that this wasn't always evident. Rachel wasn't the happy girl that she had been previously. She didn't seem to be keeping contact with her friends. The only person that she seemed to be with 100% of the time was this particular boyfriend. I can recall one phone call from his father when he asked me if I was happy with my daughter seeing his son. Unfortunately, I misconstrued this. 
I thought he was talking about the age difference. I wish he had told me at the time that his son had already been a heroin addict for two to three years. She became more and more normalised to heroin being around because she saw someone living as a heroin addict and I think Rachel became more and more used to its presence and one evening decided that she'd try it. And then slowly but surely she started doing it more and more and then the physical reliance comes into it and it's not just a mental thing, it's a physical desire to go out and buy heroin because you, your body needs it, because it starts feeling ill if it doesn't have it. Probably the worst shock that a parent can receive is to discover that their son or daughter is using heroin. It was something which we had never expected would happen in our family, especially with Rachel. There had been a Christmas when our four children were gathered round the dinner table. We asked if any of them had taken any drugs at all, specifically cannabis, and were very shocked when they all raised their hands. We felt very bad about this. We couldn't understand that, that they would even contemplate trying it. When I first thought of a heroin addict, I thought of someone who couldn't cope at all with their life, um, was a bit of a down and out, homeless maybe, begging, but heroin addicts can go on with their life as normal. They can work, they can appear normal in front of their families, um, they can hide their addiction really well. We knew very little about heroin and any other drugs really at that time. All we knew is what you see portrayed on television. What we see on TV is probably when they're right at the, the end of it, in the gutter practically because we certainly didn't pick up on these signs for a long time. All she did was run around trying to find money to get the heroin and, you know, the happiness would last for seconds and then it'd be over. She would sell anything which would raise money if she was desperate for a fix. And yet, Rachel never stole which is quite unusual. In actual fact, she went completely the other way around on one occasion. And on her 18th birthday, I'd given her, it was a sort of old red gold watch, which my grandmother had been given by my grandfather when he went off to World War I. And it must have been over a year later, when Rachel was having her problems with heroin, she actually handed the watch back to me. And she said, I want you to keep this. I said, why? And she said, because I don't want to do something stupid with it. Please take it back, look after it, and don't give it back to me. Heroin is a very particular drug. It gets inside your, your head, and it gets under your skin. It gets into your life. It gets into your friendships. And it becomes you. You'll start living a very secretive life that revolves around drugs. So fair enough, you'll be content with the fairies when you're smacked up, but you have to wake up every morning and think how you're gonna get money to get out of it so you can feel content. And the more and more you get into that, the further and further away you are getting away from the possibility of having continued contentment in your life. And the closer you're getting to dying, the closer you're getting to completely cutting yourself off from everyone who loves you and who cares about you and completely cutting yourself off from life.